Hey everybody, Steven Sitkowski here, and I had a request from a friend of mine who said, could you step-by-step -step explain to me the mechanics and also the logic behind putting on a bull call spread? So that's what we're gonna do. So let me just kind of start off by explaining to you what a bull call spread is. And I'm gonna suggest that maybe you take some notes. So we begin by going along or purchasing a call option. Simultaneously, we are going to go short or sell a higher strike call. Now, what's the whole idea behind this? Well, if I buy a call and I sell a call at the same time, the premium I receive from selling the call helps to offset the premium I paid for buying a call. So what does it do? It reduces my capital outlay, which means it reduces my risk. So what is the maximum risk when you put on a bull call spread? The answer, whatever your debit is. So, if I simply take a look at premium paid minus premium received, whatever that net is, that becomes my maximum risk. So let's say that I bought an option for $10 per share or $1,000 per contract. If, if I just bought the call option, now I'm at risk for what? $1,000. But what if I bought a call for $10 a share, and I sold another call for $7 per share. So the difference is how much $3 a share or $300 a contract, I've lowered my cost, I've lowered my risk by 70%. Now at the same time that I do that, I'm capping my upside. The maximum profit you can make in a bull call spread it's the difference between the two strike prices, the strike on the option on which you bought, the one you're long, and the one where you're short, the one that you sold, the difference between those two strikes minus the debit. So let's say that I bought a 100 strike call and I sold a 105 strike call and my net cost was $3. What is my maximum risk? $3. What is my maximum profit? The difference between the two, 105 minus 100 is $5. How much was my debit? $3. What's my maximum profit? $2. $2 maximum profit. And then we have a maximum risk of what? $3. So what does that end up being as a rate of return? Well, 66% right? Two divided by three. Now, when you put these trades on, you're hoping that the price of the stock at expiration, whatever that underlying security is, stock or ETF, is higher than the strike price of your short call. So let's again, let's use these numbers. Then we'll go on and look at a actual, um, an actual potential uh, bull call spread. Ready? So let's say I buy the 100 strike call. I sell the 105 strike call. I make a maximum profit if at expiration, assuming I hold these options until expiration, the price of the stock is 105 or greater. It doesn't matter if it's 110, 120, 130. Why is that? Because whoever owns that call, that 105 strike call, they're going to exercise that because that option will be in the money and I'll be taken out at 105. So the idea is wherever that short calls strike price happens to be, I want at expiration the price of that stock to equal that or be higher than that. That's how I make a maximum profit. Now, little nuance to this type of a trade. When you go both long and short simultaneously, then the big profit happens 
in the last week of the trade. So if you put on a trade that expires, say, in 30 or 35 days, if you just bought the call option, the stock moved up, you could sell it instantly and make a profit. Could be a substantial profit. Not with this kind of a trade structure. Because we have bought an option and sold an option, here's what happens. If the stock zooms up on the option where we have bought it, oh yeah, that value is going up. But on the option where we've sold it, the value of that is going up as well and we're short. So the difference between the two is really negligible until you get down normally into the last week. So that's one of the nuances of this type of a trade. Just know you're going to be in it until right near expiration or until expiration, which is different than how I coach people when you simply buy uh, a long call or a long put. Okay, now that you are sufficiently confused, let me just go back, do a quick review, and then we'll dive in and look at an actual uh, construction on what could be a real trade, okay? All right, we buy the lower strike call, we sell the higher strike call. What are we hoping happens? We're hoping that at expiration, the price of the underlying security of the stock is higher than the strike price on the short call position. Now, there are different ways you can structure these. You can start off both in the money with your long and your short. You can have your short at the money, or you can do this trade where the options are out of the money. If you go out of the money, you have a higher potential rate of return because your net cost is going to be less. But, Let's take that example. We have a $100 stock. I could buy an 80 strike call and sell an 85. And as long as the price of the stock is above 85 at expiration, I make a maximum profit, which means this stock in theory could go down $15 a share and I still make a maximum profit. But my profit is going to be relatively small, but that's okay. It's a very high probability trade. It's a trade where if the stock goes up, I make money, does nothing, I make money. If the stock goes down some, I make money. Now, what if my short call was at the money? We have a $100 stock and I put the short call at say 100, my long call at 95. I simply need the stock to stay at 100 or higher in order for me to make a maximum profit. On a percentage basis, what are the chances of that happening? 50-50. But I'm going to get a higher return than if I do the 85-90, okay? Um, or the 80-85. Well, what if I went out of the money? I bought a 120 and I sold a 125 strike call. Now I need this stock to go from 100 to 125, say in the next 30 days. What are the probabilities of that? Very low, but if it happens, I can make a big profit. So do you wanna be super aggressive? You wanna be in mid-range? Or do you wanna go in the money where you have a high probability? And I will tell you that is typically what I do. I normally will go in the money. And also generally, the delta, if you don't know what a delta is, you're probably not ready for this type of a trade. But generally, the delta on my short call is going to be around 0.75. Okay, that's a lot of warm-up, isn't it? You want to see what it looks like? All right, let me show you. I'm going to share my screen with you. And here we go. All right, so what do I want to use? Um, you know what, I had a stock loaded up. I'm gonna use Cadence for this example, okay? So first I'm going to take you to the chart. All right, 
Let's clean this up just a little bit. So that yellow line is a 30-day moving average. And I'm going to ask myself, so the stock is now 105. So if I went out in time around a month, where do I think the price of the stock would likely stay above? Where do I see some support? I see support at 95, and then I see more support at 90, okay? So as I look at Delta 75, I'm gonna compare it to 95 and 90. And let me take that away. So let's go into options. And I'm gonna to wanna to look at all of the strikes. And okay, so the, in this case, the August 21st uh, options chain, let's pull that up. Calls are on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna look for something around, well, if I go to the 95, that has a delta of 0.85. So here's what it means. Statistically, based, based on the Black-Scholes model, there is roughly an 85% chance that this stock will be at 95 or higher, which is what I want on August 21st. So if I were to short that, and let's see, let's buy the 90. Now I'm guessing because my probability of profit here is so high, probably not going to be a huge potential profit on it. I'm going to look to buy this at the mid. So I'm going to be able to get this for probably around $4.10 per share. Okay. The mid's 405. So if I go 410, then what is my maximum risk? $4.10 per share. What is my maximum profit? It's a difference between the two strikes, which is five minus 4.10, which is 90. So if I make 90 cents on an investment of $4.10, what is that for a rate of return? It's a little better than 20%, which I like a lot. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to amp this up a little bit. I'm going to go 10 contracts. And the midpoint is 405. Let me see if I can get that. So I'm going to go review it. So let's look. Sell to open the August 21st. 2020, 95 strike calls. So this, the symbol is CDNS, it's for cadence. And I'm going to buy the 90 strike call. So remember what I said, we buy the lower strike call, we sell the higher strike call. The debit for 10 contracts would be $4,050. You could just do one, it'd be $405. And let's see. They're going to make me reuse this. There's a little quirk in the system. Now it's at 415. That's what I figured. That was too good of a fill. So I'm looking to make 85 cents. So it's still a 20% return in a little less than a month. Submit, continue. And so right now it's open. Okay. Right now it is open, so we'll see if that gets filled. So what is my maximum profit potential if that goes through? 85 cents. What is my maximum risk? $4.15. That is about a 20% rate of return, potentially in um, less than 30 days, uh, 25 days to be specific. So, that is how we construct a bull call spread. Buy the lower strike call, sell the higher strike call.
Maximum risk, cost of the trade. Maximum profit, different between the two strike prices, minus the debit. Where do I get to a maximum profit? If at expiration, the stock or ETF is at or higher than what? The strike price on the short call. In this case, the stock was at 104 and going up. I'm betting it's going to stay above 95. So the stock could go up. I make maximum profit. Do nothing. I make maximum profit. Even if it goes down almost 10%, I make a maximum profit. That's called high probability trading. All right, this is Steven Sitkowski, and until next time, successful trading, be safe, be smart, and I'll be talking to you soon. Till then, God bless. Bye for now.